Our education system is so messed up. It's so flawed. Lacks direction, lacks efficiency, and you already know how much stress it puts on students. School's about teaching, right? And teaching at its basic level is passing down knowledge to a student that's willing to learn. Now, teaching should be about bringing that passion. It should be about growing that flame that a student already has about a subject or an idea. Now, our education system dumps water all over that flame. You know, just puts out all of our motivation for learning. And the biggest reason for that is the amount of stress they put on us. Now, I said teaching is passing knowledge on to a willing student, right? You can't teach someone if they don't want to be taught. Dog, if you ask me what I learned in Spanish class after being forced for three years to take it, no comprende. I couldn't tell you a damn thing. I didn't learn anything. And why is that? That's because for all of the tests, all of the assignments, I memorized the vocabulary, I memorized this, memorized this, memorized this. As soon as the test came, I did it, I got a decent grade, I forgot it because I had no use for it, I didn't need it. At the end of the class, when the class was over, forgot it, I didn't need it anymore. It didn't matter to me. Being forced to take classes is inefficient. You will not learn a topic if you have no reason to learn a topic, if you can't apply it anywhere. Now, in high school and college, there's all these core classes that you're forced to take. You don't have a choice, right? Why are we forcing our students to learn about um, Shakespeare and calculus and geology when for the most part, most of us are not gonna use that in our life? It's gonna be forgotten, just like my Spanish was. Now, this is not to say that any of those topics are useless. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that they're situational. You know, this has to be a willing student, interested student. Even if we're able to pick an elective that we like and that we enjoy, you know, the amount of work we get from our core classes, it just, it puts so much stress on us that we won't be able to truly absorb and learn that information from the elective. It ruins it. Now, a way I believe that we can fix this is if all the classes were selected by the student. And I'm talking about maybe in like high school or something. If there were no core classes, you just picked the topics that you liked, topics that you enjoyed, you know, there would probably still be like prerequisites and stuff like that if there's something that you have to know before you take that class. But there wouldn't be classes that it's like you're forced to take this no matter what your major is, no matter what you're doing, you're forced to take this. That shouldn't exist. This way, we get back to the basis of teaching. As I said in the beginning, teaching is passing down knowledge to a willing student. Teaching is about growing that flame that, that a student already has inside of their heart to learn, to learn about this topic or whatever you're teaching. In my education courses, the biggest thing that we were taught that I remember is that what you're teaching has to relate to the student's life. You know, if you can't answer the question, why do I need this? Then why are you teaching the subject? Tell me if I'm going to, if I'm a major in culinary arts and I want to start a bakery down the street, why the hell do I need to learn about geology first before I can do any of that? Right? If I'm going to be a writer, why do I need to know about like derivatives and calculus? It doesn't make sense. You can't, you can't tell me that I need geology to be a culinary scientist, to, to learn about stuff like that. It doesn't make sense. Applicable knowledge. If I can't apply it to my life and something, something that I'm going to do or something that I care about, I won't learn it. Now, this idea of applicable knowledge, it goes through... Um, all schools, especially poor areas where there's more dropouts, there's more absences of students. You know, let's say let's say I'm a poor student, right? Mama's working three jobs, dad's maybe not in the picture. I am at school learning about let's say mitosis. I went to school, I had a biology class, I learned about mitosis. My priority as a son is hmm, mom and I are struggling right now. But I'm sitting here learning about something I don't care about, something I can't apply to anything that's going to help me in life, you know. So my thing is, okay, my priority of helping my family is bigger than 
this damn mitosis assignment, right? So I'm going to drop out of school and I'm going to prioritize my family, work a minimum wage job and drop out so I can support my family. Bam. I just dropped out. Now, I dropped out because there was a lack of applicable knowledge. School, it clashes with my priorities and interests, right? Now, it doesn't mix. So when I come home, mom's like, hey, what'd you learn in school today? And I'm like, mitosis. I mean, it's when cells divide and shit like that, right? This is not something I care about, and it's not something that's going to help me in any way in my life. Now, if we allow students to pick their classes, right? Maybe instead of coming home and just being like, mitosis, I, I, okay, hey, what'd you learn about in school today? Well, actually, mom, I took this financing class because I know we don't have a lot of money, and I learned about how if we put money into this um, low-risk account, after a little while, it'll start to grow some more money, and we won't be as broke anymore, you know? It's a way that, it's a way that it can help. Or something like, hey, I decided to take this botany class, and there's these really cheap plants that we can plant. So can we use the backyard so we can grow some stuff and it'll cut down on grocery costs so we, you know, don't have to spend as much on groceries? Or something I could come home and be like, hey, I learned about oceanography today. You know, I really, really liked, um, it was really cool. I learned about sonar and sonar is this thing that shoots waves all the way down to the bottom of the ocean and they can just figure out how deep the ocean is with these cool machines. Now, even though the last one isn't something that's prioritizing the family, it's prioritizing my interests. You know, it's about something that I could use in my life. If I want to become an oceanographer, if I want to be a scientist about the ocean or a marine scientist, right? That's what they're called, right? Anyways, if we pick classes that merge with our priorities, school's priorities and my priorities merge. They don't clash. And that is how you get applicable knowledge something that I care about, and something that I'll be using. If the purpose of school is to produce passionate and knowledgeable individuals who, are, who know their topic extensively, forced classes are obstacles that prevent it from doing so. Now, along with all the stress of work, we also have all the stress that comes with getting grades. A class is already really hard if you don't find a point in doing it, and it's hard to learn because of that. But grading systems can be extremely, extremely unforgiving. Case in point, I'm taking an adolescent psychology class right now, right? Um, it's a good class, you know, it's something that I'm going to use in my life because I'm going to be a teacher. So obviously I need to learn adolescent psychology, right? It's something that I care about, something that I enjoy learning. Now, for this class, we had an assignment maybe like a month ago, and we were supposed to go to a database and look up an article, or an academic journal, excuse me, an academic journal on how, um, something about adolescent psychology, some studies or whatever. You're supposed to summarize it, and you have to cite it, and give it the link and everything. Basically, I did a really good job on it. I summarized everything, I summarized it really well, talked about all the studies, talked about the people, the scientists that were involved, except when I cited it, I put the wrong link. Now, the fact that I put the wrong link brought my score to a 14 out of 40. Now, yeah, that sucks. But the thing is, the worst part is it brought my 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 um my full grade down not 10%, not 20%, but 30, 30%. I had a 96% in the class, and now I suddenly have a D. Of course, I emailed the teacher, and I'm like, hey, I worked really hard in this assignment, and um, can I, do you think I could resubmit it and put the right link instead because the link just didn't work, and that's the whole reason I lost points. She emailed me back pretty fast, and she was like, hey, thanks for reaching out. No. And her reasoning behind this was because she put an announcement out earlier, or like a couple days before, and it was like, hey, make sure you use the right link, do this, use this thing, whatever. I didn't see it, or I didn't read it, or something, right? And because I didn't read that announcement, apparently, I don't deserve to be able to make it up. Because I put the wrong link when I cited my source, it is mathematically impossible for me to get an A in this class now. And I only get a B if I damn near perfect everything in all my quizzes and all my assignments. I lost three letter grades because I used the wrong link by accident. First of all, this has nothing to do with adolescent psychology. 
this does this grade does not reflect what I did. This grade does not reflect my knowledge of adolescent psychology. The fact that I even lost points on something like this and wasn't able to resubmit it, well, that pisses me off because it has nothing to do with what I was taught. It doesn't have to do with the class. It has to do with, oh, you didn't do this right, so I'm going to take off all these points and you're not going to be able to get an A anymore because of one thing. This happens a lot more than you'd expect. And because of this, your grades don't really reflect your knowledge in a course or a subject. Secondly, this perfectionism that we see in teachers toxic the fact that i have to step on eggshells and walk around the eggshells to to cater to this person that i know if i get one thing wrong it could ruin my entire grade it's it's so stressful it's unneeded now couple this with the fact that it's already probably a forced class and a class that i don't even want to take that i can't apply anything to that's going to make it even worse so you know I don't like the idea of forced classes, right? But there's something else that I think that we have to get rid of. And that's a grading system. Now, let me be clear. Students still need feedback. They still need criticism. Of course, because learning is all about just making mistakes and then fixing them. But they don't need the numbers. See it like this. So you're walking on eggshells for a class you really don't even care about, right? You miss an assignment and your grade plummets. Now, you have to work your ass off to get a grade you probably don't even deserve. That's even more stressful. You don't get a good grade in the class, maybe the stress was too much for you, you had too much to work, work for, and you don't get a good grade in the class. Because of that, your GPA falls so much. Now, now maybe you won't get into that school you dreamed of getting into. Stressful. See, the thing is, our school system loves numbers too damn much. You got, a, you got a number for your GPA, got a number for your grade, got a number for your SAT score. All of these numbers describing you. This two or three digit number describes you, how smart you are, how successful you could be, how much you matter. The fact that any mess up in any class could completely ruin that numerical image of yourself. Terrifying. Stressful. Unnecessary. Now, if we got rid of all those numbers, we removed as much stress as we could from the situation, and the student could pick a class that was applicable to them, right? A student could pursue their passion without fear of making mistakes, and if they do make mistakes, they still get their feedback, they still get their criticism that they need in order to get better at what they want to do. They can use this applicable knowledge, right? And they can turn it into something useful. Turn it into something that they're going to use outside of the classroom so they don't forget it all. If the purpose of school is to produce passionate, knowledgeable individuals who understand a topic extensively, this is the way to do it. Going back to the basics of teaching, passion, and application. By forcing our students into classes that they won't use, and then labeling them based off of a number that is easily influenced by perfectionist teachers, we destroy the passion that our students have for learning. And we put unnecessary stress on them to do things that aren't relevant. But my GPA starts with a 2, so I'm probably just a stupid dummy that doesn't know what he's talking about, right? That's kind of all I got to say for this video. Um, if you liked it, like, comment, subscribe. Especially comment, because if you ever had any experiences with teachers like that, or perfectionists, or something ruining your grade... Um, I want to hear about it, you know, I want to hear about any experiences that you've had in school. So, uh, peace.